Color grading is one of the hardest parts of photo editing, especially in Photoshop. But with these four steps, you can steal the color grading look from any photo. And to help you remember all of the steps that you learn here, I'll leave a free cheat sheet in the description below to help you remember everything that we discuss. Now, before you get started with this process, I would recommend just opening the photo that you want to edit first as the main project image, and then loading your reference photo into your project by going up to File, and then down here to Place Embedded, selecting the reference photo from your computer, and then placing it on top of the image that you would like to edit as a separate layer. From there, the first step that we're going to do is add a black and white adjustment layer so that we can focus on just the exposure and contrast between our reference layer and the layer that we want to edit. To do that, I'll go to the adjustments panel and then go and find the black and white adjustment layer here. We won't make any adjustments to this adjustment layer, but we'll then click on our image layer and add a curves adjustment next. And this is where we're going to do all of our contrast adjustments making sure that this curves layer is directly above the image layer that we want to edit so it's not going to affect our reference layer. We want to first look at the shadows, midtones, and highlights of our reference photo in relation to the image that we're editing. Now the first thing that I notice is that the shadows are quite a bit lighter and more matte looking in the reference photo compared to the image that we're working on. So I'll click on the black point and lift this up to add a slightly more matte look to this photo. From there, the highlights look quite muted in our reference image, which means I'll click on the white point and drag down to mute the highlights of our image as well to match that feel. Now from there, our photo is feeling pretty flat, so we're going to work through the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights of our curves to add back some contrast similar to our reference photo. Since there's a little bit more punchy contrast with our reference image, I'll click and drag down in the shadows to add some punchy contrast back into the image that we're working on. Then to make the midtones pop a little more, I'll click and drag up in the midtones like so to make those pop. As for the highlights, we can play around with that to see what works. Once you feel like you're pretty close to what you're looking for, you can turn off the black and white adjustment to see a comparison of the overall feel. Turning the curves adjustment layer on and off, we can see how we've just muted down the tones in our photo, and now it kind of has a similar overall vibe to the reference image. Now it's going to be important and pretty helpful if your reference photo is taken in a similar type of area and scene as the image that you're working on, so that way the colors and things are easy to replicate. If you have a reference photo that was taken in a wildly different environment, it's going to be hard to match all of the things that we talk about in this tutorial. But anyways, now that this is complete, we can move on to step number two, which is using a gradient map to match the colors. But before we get there, I'll delete the black and white adjustment layer by clicking and dragging on that layer down to the trash icon to remove it. Now we're ready to add a gradient map adjustment above our curves adjustment layer. Going to the adjustments panel, I'll go and find the gradient map adjustment layer and we'll add that to our project. Making sure it's below our reference layer, I'll click on the thumbnail of the gradient map and then click on the gradient preview to access the gradient editor. I'll then click on the shadows point and the color thumbnail to access the color picker. Now we can go and click on the reference photo to sample different colors. And the goal here for this particular point is to sample a shadows color from our reference image. If you're having weird sample results, just make sure that your sample size is set to 3x3 three three or 5x5 five five average, and also make sure that you have sample all layers enabled. From there, I'll go and click on the shadows area of my reference photo to get a sampled color. That looks good enough for me there, so I will click OK. And now we'll go and add a midtones point by clicking in the middle to add a new color swatch. And then I'll click on the color thumbnail. And now we'll go and sample a midtones color from our image. So this is going to be the middle exposure range from our reference photo. This looks good enough to me here, so I'll click OK. And then we'll go to the highlights, click on the highlights color point, then the color thumbnail. And then we'll go and click in the brightest area of our reference photo, which is the sun in this case. So we'll just click OK after sampling that. Now, in some cases, you might want to add even more colors. So you can add color stops between the midtones and shadows and the midtones and highlights. To do that, I'll click once again between the shadows and the midtones. You can just eyeball it to be in the middle. And this will add a new color swatch there. 
I'll now click on the color thumbnail and we want to sample a darker color that is a little bit lighter than our shadows. Once you're happy with your color sample, click OK. And then I'll go and add an additional color stop between the midtones and the highlights. Click on the color thumbnail and now I'll go and sample a lighter color from the sky that is a little bit lighter than the midtones but a little darker than the highlights. So that way we just have a little bit more color variation on our gradient map. Once you're happy with that, we can click OK and click OK again to exit the gradient editor. Now, of course, this doesn't look anything like our reference photo, so we can blend this into our image a little bit better by going to our blending mode and changing this to overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, or you can also try color. The options that you choose will depend on your photo, so try to experiment with those different settings. But for this example, I think I'll go with the soft light option. Now, since the colors are a little bit too intense, I'll click on the opacity slider and I'll bring down the opacity to lighten that up a little bit. So now that color effect is just a little bit more subtle overall. Now turning these two adjustments on and off, you can see we've already made some pretty good progress in this edit, but now we need to do some final refinements to touch things up to make it feel even more like our reference image. So this brings us into step number three, which is where we're going to use the color balance adjustment to add the colors that we feel are missing from the photo. So going back to the adjustments panel, I'll go and find the color balance adjustment layer and click on that to add it to my project. I'll then go to the shadows in this case and looking at the shadows of this photo compared to the reference, the reference has more of a blue green feel, which means I'm going to add a little bit of blue, add a little bit of green, and a little bit of cyan to sort of replicate that bluey feel. Now we'll go to the highlights and do a similar thing. Looking at the highlights of the reference photo in relation to our image, it feels like there's a little bit more blue, a little bit more red, and perhaps a touch of green as well. Now with that complete, you could go and adjust your midtones as well, but in most cases you can get away with just doing the highlights and the shadows. So turning this on and off, it just makes a slight difference to match the general feel of a reference photo a little bit better. So now this brings us into the fourth and final step of the process, which is using hue saturation to refine any colors that are still feeling a little bit off. And the beauty of hue saturation is that we can target those colors individually. To add a hue saturation adjustment, we'll go up to our adjustments panel and then go and find the hue saturation adjustment layer. Now we want to go and look at the dominant colors in our photo, which is kind of basically red and yellow in this case. So I'll go and begin by selecting the yellows color channel and I'll play around with the hue to match the yellows of our photo more to the reference because in the reference photo, those yellow colors are a little bit more muted and brown. So adjusting the hue towards a more red color, I'll then desaturate that slightly as well to give it a similar feel to our reference photo. We can then play around with the lightness of that to match things up a little bit better as well. Next, I'll go to the reds color channel. And for whatever photo you're working on, just think of whatever the dominant colors are in that image. It's gonna change for every photo. In this image, it's just red and yellow. Those are the dominant colors, which is why I'm working in those color channels. But again, I'm gonna do the same thing as before, adjusting the hue to match a little bit more of that washed out feel, increasing the saturation just a touch in this channel, and then playing around with the lightness once again. Now a final thing that you can do to ensure that the hue saturation adjustment doesn't affect the exposure and contrast of your image is to change that adjustment layer from the normal blending mode down here to color. And so now it will only affect the colors and will not affect the contrast in your photo. So now with this complete, you might feel like there are a few areas that you could improve to make the match a little bit closer. In this case, I feel like we could add a little bit more contrast to our photo to match that of the reference image. So I'll click on the curves adjustment layer, which is where we added all of our contrast. And I'll refine this adjustment by darkening up the shadows to add a little bit more contrast there, boosting the midtones just slightly, and then bringing down the highlights a touch. This feels a little bit better for me overall. And although we have way more highlights in our current photo that we're editing, it's just because the reference image does not have a lot of highlights because the sun is sort of muted by those clouds. So compared to our other image, the levels of contrast are a little bit different. So it's gonna be pretty hard to get a totally muted look like we have in a reference photo. So we're just trying to do as best as we can. But now with all of that complete, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So looking at our before, 
and now our after using just four simple adjustments that we were able to guide really easily with the help of a reference photo. One more time, looking at the before and the after with our reference image enabled, you can see all of the changes that we've made with those four simple adjustment layers. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna grab a copy of the free lesson cheat sheet for this video, I'll leave a link below so you can access that. But now that you have a color grading style complete, you might as well save your work as a new adjustment preset for later use. I share exactly how you can create and save these presets for yourself in this video here that you can click on your screen to watch now. I hope to see you there next.